Hi guys and welcome to Horologic. My name is Olivier and today I will be reviewing the Saint Martin 62 mass homage and this is the new version which comes at 37 millimeters. For those on the channel, about a year ago I reviewed the 41 millimeter version of this watch and I found it absolutely beautiful. However, there was a problem and it was the fact that it was a bit too large for my wrist and I suppose for most wrists under seven, seven and a half. So this was a bit of a blessing, however, to have this watch in 37 millimeters. Not only that, but it comes very close to the dimensions of the original 62 mass from Seiko, which came out in 1965. Knowing that all the reissues from Seiko itself have been at least 40 and 40 and a half millimeters. However, knowing that, is this watch any good, especially at the quite high price that Saint Martin are asking, around 320 for the PT5000 version and around 450 for the SW200 version. Let's see that. But before, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It does help me to bring you the best content and the best offers that I see around and that I talk to you about. And of course, don't forget that coupon which will knock $20 off this watch. And the coupon is Orologic, all in capitals. Knowing that, let's go right to the review. We are going to start with the looks of this watch. You've got a charcoal dial, which is very, very similar to the original 62 mass with that amazing sunburst that I love so much and that plays with the light so well with those very large rectangular indices, larger at 6 and at 9, knowing that the 12th index is even broader, making for a very functional design. The loom is, of course, outstanding. Wait for that, it's coming. At three, you've got the date window, which is beautifully surrounded by a stainless steel frame. On the upper part of the dial, you've got the Saint Martin octagon, which is applied. And at the bottom of dial, you've got automatic 200 meters, 660 feet, which is just printed. All around the periphery of the dial, you've got the seconds markers. The loom has a bit of a greenish hue. I'm not certain why, maybe they were trying to make it look a bit a bit vintage but in that case why didn't they use old radium loom which is yellow inside of green hmm let's talk about the hands because they're a highlight of this watch they are baton hands they have three surfaces they have one large surface which is flanked by two beveled surfaces which give it a tri-dimensional and classy look along with the frames of the indices they are highly polished and this reflects light beautifully. Protecting this beautiful dial is a box domed sapphire crystal. It is double domed because when you angle the watch all the way, you don't see any distortion and it does seem to have a bit of either transparent or a bit bluish anti reflective coating, which does a great job at making the watch visible when you're outside. And the loom, the loom is amazing. I know that Saint Martin makes amazing loom, but here they have one up themselves. The loom in this watch is exceptional. It may be due to the large indices and rather large loom pip as well, as you can see in these night shots. For loom lovers, you will not be disappointed. Let's go to the bezel and the bezel is a 120 click unidirectional as you would expect and the bezel insert is ceramic you do not have a loom bezel insert here only the 12 o'clock pip is loomed the sensation when you turn the bezel is actually very good with the clicks being crisp and staying in place there's no back play here and of course the loom pip and the 12 marker align perfectly let's now talk about the case when you look at the case from the side you can see that it has a kind of a boomerang shape that helps with how this watch wears and how it conforts to the curvature of the wrist. As we are here, let's discuss the pierced lugs so you can change straps easier. As you can see, the finish is a polished, a very high quality. You know that if Saint Martin has a strong point, it is the finishing of their cases, their hands. And that is true as well 
with the finishing on the top of the watch with a very high quality circular finish. If you flip the watch, you're greeted with the Saint Martin Shark that I do like very much. I understand that they have relegated it to the back of the watch only because it is somehow childish. I understand that they don't use it for the logo, for example, but it is very well made, very deeply etched. Let's go to the bracelet of the watch and you've got almost your typical three link bracelet with a twist because there are two bevels to that center link and those bevels are polished, knowing that the rest of the bracelet is brushed. So they do help in making this watch shinier. Everything is of course solid, the end links, the links themselves, and they are held together with screws. The clasp is the classical clasp that Saint Martin has been using lately, which is very good. There's an embossed Saint Martin hexagon logo. All the elements are solid and there's four levels of micro adjustment. Nothing to complain about with this clasp. Everything is well made and in line with the high standards of Saint Martin quality. A little complaint with this bracelet though, I would have loved it to taper a bit more to a 16 to keep with the vintage vibe of this watch and to help with the balance between the head of the watch and the bracelet. Especially that clasp, which feels almost as heavy as the head of the watch. Let's talk about dimensions here. And you have got a diameter of bang on 37 millimeters, a height of 12.8 millimeters, a log to log of a compact 46.8 millimeters, but an effective end link to end link of 50.2 millimeters because this has male end links. And note that the second links of the bracelet do not fully turn inwards. You know that these PT5000s are always a bit of a question mark. However, they're being used more and more and they have been used for a bit over a decade now, we can say that they're pretty reliable and as you can see the measures are pretty exceptional within cost actually. To sum it up, you have got a fantastic watch in here. One that screams quality and you can see that when you have the watch in your hands, maybe a little bit too much, I would have liked it for a vintage reference to be a little bit lighter. It does however comfort very well to a medium-sized wrist, but I am in awe with the quality of this watch. Saint Martin do make exceptional watches, and when the 41mm version came, I did say it was one of the best watches they had made to date. I did say as well that I wish the bracelet was a little bit smaller and less thick, and I do say the same thing here. I wish the bracelet was a little bit less imposing. Nothing that cannot be changed with swapping this watch with a waffle strap, which is made very easy with those pierced logs. Let's talk price now, and price is a kind of a tricky subject with this one. Let's go to the easy part. At $450, the SW200 version is way too expensive at least from my point of view. But if you talk about the PT5000 version, at $322, is it too expensive? Seeing the quality of the watch, I would say no. It is correctly priced, especially if you use that Orologic code that I gave you, that will make the watch go down to $300. If you want a more affordable option for this one, You've got the 37mm option from Seastern. I have not taken a look to that one, but you've got an NH35 in there. You've got a movement downgrade for that one. And the quality, I am certain, is not as good as this one. Maybe sometime I will review it. But if you want a 62 mass homage that is very much homaging the original, I believe this is an exceptional value for that. I personally prefer watches that homage references that have long gone. Seiko themselves have done it, of course, like we have seen with the SPB 143, for example. But this one with its 37mm frame is bringing the 62 mass into the 21st century and with an amazing level of quality. I really wish Seiko would have made this watch, but at this level of quality, they would have asked for too much money to make. 
Anyway, thank you all for watching. As I told you, I reviewed the 41mm of this watch. I believe there's a V4 right now. Check the V3 that I reviewed in here, and I'll be seeing you very soon. Goodbye.